Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk, and today we're on to pseudoscientist number 7, and here's yet again another flat earther, but this one has a bit of a difference to all the other flat earthers. You see, with many flat earthers, they will throw insults at people that they disagree with, which is actually fine. I don't mind being insulted, I've insulted other people before. But you see, I find that it gets really obnoxious when someone decides Oh, I haven't insulted anyone in the last 10 seconds, better throw another one in! At least have the patience to wait until you make a good point to insult someone. By the way, the person that I'm talking about today is Q and Fee. Welcome to Toonsday Night, I'm MC Toon. You know, for years, Flat Earthers have filled bathtubs full of tears because they don't have a map that works. Oh hey, MC Toon, how you doing buddy? Also, yeah, he is right, Flat Earthers don't have a map. Awake souls and limitless tried one where the equator was wavy all over the place. That was ridiculous. Daz Nez had one that was in the shape of a diamond. I don't know how that fits with his Bible version. And and of course, Arwen uses the Mercator map. Oh, uh, now you were mentioning a couple of guys that are uh, so they're just shells that have no uh, reality into their f***ing head. Well, Q and Fee, why has there been no flat earther to come up with an accurate flat earth map. If the people who MC Toon brought up are only stupid or shills, then surely there should be a flat earther out there that would be able to complete that challenge, right? And if all the people who have attempted it are either stupid or a shill, what does that say about the people who haven't attempted it, who maybe are smarter? Like QNF, where is your flat earth map? You're supposed to be smarter than these other people, right? At least, you seem to think you're smarter than these other people. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do what no Flat Earther has the guts to do since Tiger Dan. Oh, Tiger Dan. Yeah, I remember him. Also a shill. Just a f***ing moron. I showed him uh, his uh, circling mean son cannot work over the Flat Earth. Look buddy, I think you'll find a lot of things don't work over the Flat Earth. It's probably the Flat Earth that's the problem here at this point. Also, I find it funny how quick you are to accuse other Flat Earthers of being shills. I've seen plenty of people make silly arguments in favour of the globe, but never once have I said this person is a shill because he makes us look bad. And in fact, there's a few Flat Earthers out there that might even accuse QNF of being a shill because he does make Flat Earthers look pretty bad. So I am going to show you how it's done and what Flat Earthers don't have the guts to do. Which Flat Earthers you mean? Oh, your shilly uh, teammate Flat Earthers. <laughs> yeah, but I modeled it up like a hundred times. Okay, if you've modeled it up, what is that model? I'd love to see it, and I'm sure that there are a lot of Flat Earthers out there who would love to see it. Surely we'll catch some kind of glimpse of this model in this video, right? You can try to claim all sorts of things about holograms, about light paths, about uh, it's just a light in the sky. None of that actually works. Your chilly flat earth friends come up with all kind of bullshit because they want the people to believe in that bullshit. You understand, moron? No, QNF, you've got it wrong. The reason why flat earthers come up with all kinds of wacky things is because they don't have any good explanation for things. You see, there are just so many problems that are inherent to the idea of a flat earth that you've got no choice but to come up with something that just sounds completely ridiculous. With the globe, however, observations tend to work pretty well. Sometimes you may need to take into account refraction, but that's about it. You don't need to go, ah, but the sun is actually a hologram and the moon is a hologram too. You don't need any of that. Because this is not kindergarten, right? The things that you say are going to be tested. It's time you start to test your globe, idiot. But you refuse to do that, but I will do that later on, idiot. You know, the globe is constantly tested. There's so many observations out there that work far better with the globe than they do with the Flat Earth. The problem is though that Flat Earthers will take any slight thing that they don't think quite works with the globe and say that it proves Flat Earth when the thing that they're talking about wouldn't even work on a Flat Earth. When it, when it contradicts our own, our own wishes, we must be honest. We must be rational and follow the actual evidence. Honest and rational. <laughs> Idiot. Now we get eight minutes of bullshit talk. What is that kind of response to just go, <laughs> Idiot. That's not even a response. 
not really. Like, if he actually wanted to say something there, he could have said something like, well, I hope MC Toon isn't a hypocrite and will do the exact same thing. Sure, it may work out that MC Toon isn't a hypocrite, but, you know, at least he would have said something better than what he did. Surely everyone gets what I mean about his constant insulting being obnoxious, right? Because I had to go through far more insults than I'm even showing here. We, can, we know that in Sweden uh, and in Norway, that it, the sun rises due east. And so this is from uh, DaytonTime.com or one, one of the online things. That site is uh, called suncoke.net. So I want to jump in just to clarify what QMV said because his accent does make it hard to understand him. He said suncalc.net and I'm going to put that on the screen because I know that there are people out there that have difficulty understanding someone who doesn't have an accent. Uh, you'll see that it angles up a tiny bit, the reason why. Yeah, tell us the reason why. Why it points up a little bit. Is because this is showing the direction of the top edge of the sun, not the geometric center of the sun. That's just bullshit. All these apps use the uh, center of the sun, you idiot. <laughs> you a f fraud. All these websites use the center of the sun. So the reason that he's saying that doesn't actually seem to be because he's, you know, checked it or something like that. If he did, he could show where it says that or he could explain his rationale for reaching that conclusion. His rationale seems to be, oh look, this line goes to the center of the circle, so therefore the website must be using the center of the sun. Unfortunately for QNF, there is something that he is completely missing because if we check the left side of a screen, we can see something that says altitude. Now I went to suncalc.net to find out what exactly this is referring to. Now, it turns out that the altitude is the angle between the horizon and the center of the sun, including refraction. Now, if we go back and look at QMV's screen again, we can see that the altitude listed there is negative 0.23 degrees. This means that the center of the sun is 0.23 degrees below the horizon. Now, keep in mind that the radius of the sun has an angular size of 0.25 degrees. So this means that MC Toon is right. It is referring to any part of the sun being over the horizon, not the center of the sun. Now, if we wanted to see when the center of the sun went above the horizon, then we can always set the time to be four minutes in the future. So instead of 516, it would be 520. And we can see that the sun is not perfectly to the east, but keep in mind that it is including refraction, and also the altitude is 0 0.02 degrees. This is information that was on QMFE's screen. He could have found it. So QMFE, you probably shouldn't be calling other people idiots and morons. That's all that was the option for this website. So if you actually look at the geometric center of the sun, so when the geometric center of the sun is visible, it is not um, slightly north of due east, it's right at due east. And then same thing for South Africa. So you're showing these two locations. Hmm, that's not a possible on your globe. You understand? So that sun at the 70 latitude north have an azimuth of uh, 87.36. That's 1.7 degrees from uh, 90. Okay, firstly, your maths is off. That's 2.64 degrees away from 90. Also, your location has shifted a little bit. Just thought I'd point that out to you. But secondly, QMV, please look at the number above that. That is the number that you should pay some attention to. I was hoping that you'd notice that, but unfortunately, you haven't. When you get the altitude just above the horizon, the azimuth is a lot closer to 90. 89.27 degrees. That is almost a degree of difference from my initial value of 88.32. And again, it takes into consideration the effects of refraction. And at the same moment, here is South Africa. We see an angle of 91.37. Hmm. Okay, there's something wrong here because I noticed that the sun wasn't visible yet and I went ahead and checked and I noticed that I wasn't getting the same results that he was. And the reason being is because the date has changed from the 20th of March to the 21st of March. You see, that is why the azimuth was over 2 degrees off. If we go ahead and set the date back to the 20th, well, then the sun is no longer visible. The sun only becomes visible if we change the time to 541. Um, really wish the 41 was in the autofill. There we go. 
Of course, if we want the altitude to be over the horizon, then the time needs to be 544. That's another thing that is never going to account for, I don't think. Now, if we check South Africa at the same time, we can see that the altitude is over the horizon and that the azimuth is 90.68 degrees. Why QMV decide to go with the 21st, I don't know why. He should have double checked. If that is intentional, then he's being dishonest. With the data from real life, you get conflicting positions for the sun. And everyone has a personal right. sun, that's so weird. Yeah, everyone has to have a personal sun. They have to for this to work. But weird. if you put that same yeah. data onto a globe, and you put that exact same data from real life onto a globe, and what you find is it all points in the same direction as though the sunlight is right, coming in parallel, right? Oh hey, it's FTFE, we're getting all the Globe Earth YouTubers here today. Anyway, I've never actually heard a good argument against what FTFE is presenting here. I wonder if QNV will try to come up with something against it. So, in this case, well, if the real world data maps onto a globe, boom, all pointing in the same direction, less than one degree variance. So, less than one degree variance. <laughs> yeah, I show a three degrees variance. From north to south, where is your son, idiot? <laughs> well, when I did what you did, except I got it right, the variation was only 1.37 degrees. And keep in mind that at the horizon, the refraction is going to be higher. You had to fudge your numbers in two different ways. I have here the data in the globe modeling program with the two locations. That's at least uh, two and a half sun diameters. Well, keep in mind that what you've got here comes from you misusing a program that also accounts for refraction. So, of course it's going to be off. That's at least three million kilometer distance between the two. And on the flat earth, that will be only uh, a couple of thousand kilometer. Okay, well, that means that it still fits the globe Better than the flat Earth. Because a couple thousand kilometers this is a far bigger difference on the scale of 20,000 kilometers than 3 million kilometers is on the scale of 150 million kilometers. Even if we go with the 8.4 million kilometers that you really should have been using if you had paid attention, then that's still a far bigger difference with the flat Earth. Now, I know that flat Earthers will disagree with me because they don't understand the concept of proportion, but this is not good for flat Earth. It doesn't work. Anyway, I think I'll leave that there. I did spend a bit more time on this video than I wanted to, and we only got halfway, but it's all right. You can always leave a comment saying, I demand to be subjected to this again, and then I might make a part two in the new year. But as you're leaving a comment, you should also probably leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Mori, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosanna Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarge Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there, or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.